Hello, this is Sunrise Daily TV, your number one news and entertainment channel. My name is Prince William Chimis and Richards, the CEO of Sunrise Daily TV and Sunrise Youth Entrepreneur Initiative, LTG GT. Please make Sunrise Daily TV your number one news channel. Yo, yeah, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite boy TC Virus, aka Yoga Director. Guys, I want you to subscribe to Sunrise Daily TV. Sunrise Daily TV. Now beg at the beg Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe for more of this. Good day everyone. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily TV. My name is Anya Momo Precious Uzachuku. I have here with me the president of Ohane Zendibo Youth Council. Please, sir, can you introduce yourself? All right, uh, my name is Komwe Mwayaka Mwayaka. I'm the national president of Ohane Zendibo. Thank you. You have been a frontline campaigner for the release of Nande Kano. Do you think his release will stop insecurity in Southeast? Well, thank you so much. Uh, when people ask this question, do you think this uh, release will um, stop insecurity? It is better we put so many things out uh, or we give a detailed explanation concerning the genesis of uh, insecurity in Southeast. Uh, before the arrest of Nam in 2020, uh, there was a uh, peace in Southeast. The Probiafons, the, the architects, they are asking for a referendum in Nigeria. They have been doing a peaceful demonstration with the non violence uh, uh, movement, which the uh, IPO also declared that their process of the actualization of the state of Nigeria is a two non violence movement. Until when he was arrested, and uh, the issue of uh, the prison break, and uh, we have said severally that the prison break is a project to demonize IPOP by the former President Muhammad Buhari because. Uh, the whole prison break, the operation that lasted for um, more than four hours without any repressal attack from the security agents, you know, made us to suspect the, 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 the government of the day when this incident took place. We have never had hide our feelings in this regard. So, the insecurity in Southeast is a planned conspiracy to demonize IPOP. Because the IPOP and Unam de Carlo, they have been agitating and there was no insecurity in Southeast until when he was arrested from a way prison break and there is crisis all over the southeast. So when somebody asks, do you think as if the IPOP are causing insecurity? Let me make it clear, the IPOP has no business with insecurity in southeast. That is a simple truth. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Why haven't the Southeast leaders met Tinubu since after the meeting of the governors? Uh, I think uh, most of the people use uh, this uh, political language, Southeast leaders. The question I keep asking our people in actual sense, if we have uh, Southeast leaders, if we have leaders in Southeast, because this is uh, three years Nnamdi Kalu was arrested 
from uh, President Muhammad Buhari um, administration to this uh, Tinibu administration. Obviously, we have a leaders in Southeast that lack empathy. We have a leaders in Southeast that have lost control over the people. We have uh, leaders in Southeast that they are just rulers who are ruling according to their own selfish desire. Because if we have leaders in Southeast, they're supposed to make a case of Nam de Kalo, the time Nam de Kalo was adopted from Kenya. Because Nigeria failed to follow the legal procedure of the extraordinary redemption on the issue of Nam de Kalo. They failed. So if we have leaders in Southeast, they could have questioned the federal government and resisted even the federal government, even trying to try Nam de Kalo because you cannot try Nam de Kalo in any court in Nigeria. Like what happened in 1984 when um, Omar Odiko was arrested or kidnapped or adopted in in in, uh, in uh, UK, the British government stopped the arrest. That if you want to arrest him, you must follow the legal process to arrest him. So the Southeast leaders we are talking about, they knew the process. Nam de Kalu was arrested, knowing that it is illegal, but they kept quiet, they kept adamant. In fact, one can say that they are part of the arrest of Nam de Kalu. Because keeping quiet in a crime means that you are part of that crime. And I have said it, they are waking up late because the damages has already been done. A lot of damages in Southeast that need both political and economic repair. In fact, it is unfortunate. I can say that what happened within this period of unknown government in Southeast, as orchestrated by the government of uh, President Muhammad Buhari, is more heavy than what happened to us in 1966 to 1970. The, Biafran, uh, the, 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 the genocide against the Biafras, particularly the Igbos, that lasted for three years. So, the Southeast governors and leaders, they wake up very late. It is very, very unfortunate that we have these crops of leaders that don't care about the political interests of our people. Now, anyway, there is an adage in Igbo language, Let's watch them not going to press that we had a meeting, we are going to meet Tinubu, this and that. What we want is the unconditional release of Nam de Kalo. I want the Southeast governors and leaders to mark action, mark their ways with action, not just making a statement. It is very, very important at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Do you see Nam de Kalo coming out soon? Yes, of course, because Nam de Kalo needs to come out soon and immediately because the court in Nigeria cannot try him. What they need to do, either they release him unconditionally or they send him, they send him back to Kenya and follow the normal process to bring him to Nigeria to try him if they want to try him. These are just the two options facing the Nigeria government on the Nam de Kalo matter case. So they need to release him or they send him back to Kenya. Simple. That is what the law provides. Okay. okay. Um, recently, you appeared on Arise TV condemning the proposal to create Olu State from Imo State. Since you are from Olu, why do you support the creation of Anioma State? Uh, I think uh, I, as the president of Ohanese Youth Council, I represent a people. And uh, there is no reasonable and progressive Igbo person that should be talking about Olo State. In fact, at, at this time, the proposed Olo State is as a result of few political profiteers and people who see politics as a means of earning a living. There is no reasonable progressive 
Igbo person that we'll be talking about from those states. We are aware that uh, part of the principles that guided the creation of the geopolitical zones in Nigeria is people with the same political history and cultural identity. And on that note, Anoma or the Igbos in Delta, they are not supposed to be in South South. They are supposed to be in South East. So the creation of Anoma State and seeding them to South East, South East is part of the, 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 the mistake the Nigerian government did in the past. They want to correct it. And every reasonable person from any part of South East should encourage this correction the federal government want to do on the issue of marginalization against the Igbos or creating part of the Igbo area to another geopolitical zones. So, logically, we're supposed to talk about Anoma. The Anoma, or even the Delta not alone, uh, 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 has uh, 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 nine local governments, including the, uh, 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 the Igbos in, um, in, 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 in Edo and uh, part of the Okwani, the Ndoni people that we are seeded to River State. They will be carved out to form um, the, the, the new Anoma State. So as an, Igbo, as an Igbo person and somebody that is representing Igbo uh, interests, the Anoma will serve the interests of Southeasterners, we serve the interests of Ndi Igbo, we serve the interests of Nigeria based on the principle of geo, uh, 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 geographical uh, um, uh, 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 zones uh, 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 creation in Nigeria. Because they say that, but if you watch in the, in the Southwest, the Eurobars, they, they are in one zone. So that is how it's supposed to be to the Igbos. So we are asking for equity. We are asking for something that is reasonably enough to ask for. And that is Anyoma State. We cannot be talking about Olo. In fact, Olo shouldn't exist in this issue. Nobody should mention Olo or mention any other state. Some people are talking about other, other state where it is state. No. So we are talking about Anoma. They are qualified to have the state. And I want to tell the public today that Anoma people pay the ultimate price and sacrifice on the issue of during the genocide in Nigeria. The Asaba mass massacre. There are a lot of things that we need to consider to say yes, they are due to have a state. When that state was created and Baba Gida, you know, ceded the capital to Asaba, the Izo people and the other ethnic tribes within the, 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 the present Delta state revolted against it that why must the state capital be in, uh, in, 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 in Asaba. And if you watch historically, when, um, when James Ibori was governor, they have a mini government house at Wari. Meaning that in action and in all ramification, they don't even see Asaba as the supposed state capital of Delta states. They don't want Asaba people. So these are the reasons we are demanding that. Hence, you people don't want Asaba people. Let them have their own states and be carved to southeast. That is what we are asking. So that there will be regional equity and zona equity in Nigeria. Thank you. So, the eyes have eight, isn't it? Go 
Go for yourselves. Go for yourselves. Go for yourselves. Since you are in support of the Anioma State, the creation of Anioma State, do you think that the Anioma people will be better off to, to the southeast? It's like I told you before that uh, one of the reasons they considered in creating geopolitical zones is people with the same political history and cultural identity. This is what the federal government considered. So naturally, Anioma is supposed to be in southeast. They're supposed to be part of southeast. And they are happy for it. They want to have their own states and they want to be part of the east. Because if we call for maybe a Zuna meeting where the leaders are talking, speaking Igbo, they're speaking Igbo, they will be hearing you. But, you know, saying um, in South South, if they're speaking in John, and uh, another person will not hear in John or hear Ogonima. So, but if they are in Southeast here, if you speak Igbo, they are hearing Igbo. They are Igbo people. In fact, I have said it several that the Anioma people are more Igbo than any part of Igbo land. Because what happened in Asaba, like I told you, they used their, they shed their blood for the sake of the Igbos and for the sake of peace in Nigeria. So they are overqualified to have states than to talk about or look at it or other other states so we are supporting a normal state with our bones with our blood with everything within our reach it is their right to have it thank you yeah. thank you so much sir mm -hmm. what is your advice to those who are in the senate and those who are in the house of assembly who are proposing these views I think uh, it is time for the National Assembly to show their patriotism uh, as leaders of Nigeria. And uh, showing such uh, patriotism is doing something that will support peace, something that will support unity in Nigeria. Like I said, supporting Anioma states and dropping any of the uh, 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 proposed uh, states in southeast is showing that patriotism that there is a need to create a normal state to balance the political uh, equity for southeast to have their own six states like others so i appeal to them to see the creation of a normal state as a promotion of peace equity as a solution to the long age marginalization against the Southeast people. They need to show this patriotism. They need to demonstrate this leadership empathy that for years Southeast is marginalized. So I'm appealing to the senators in Southwest, South South, the Middle Belt and the not to see this as an opportunity because part of the issues that is causing agitation in southeast among the pro Biafra is this marginalization so i think creating a normal state is part of the step or is part of things something they need to do to make sure that these people that are talking about we need biafra and say okay we are giving you people one more state there is always negotiation in political issues and political matters. You cannot beat a child and ask a child not to cry. So denying the Southeast or denying the creation of a normal state is like beating a child and asking a child not to cry. So there is a need for a National Assembly. I'm pleading on behalf of the Igbo youth to see the creation of Anioma state as a symbol of equity, a symbol of fairness and justice in Nigeria. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. We are glad to have you. You're welcome in our midst. Thank you so much. And I want you people to project Anioma state as a symbol of equity in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. We have come to the end of this interview. Subscribe. See you next time.
Hello, this is Sunrise Daily TV, your number one news and entertainment channel. My name is Prince William Chimese Richards, the CEO of Sunrise Daily TV and Sunrise Youth Entrepreneur Initiative, LTG GT. Please make Sunrise Daily TV your number one news channel. Yo, what's up ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite boy TC Virus, aka Yoga Director. Guys, I want you to subscribe to Sunrise Daily TV. Sunrise Daily TV. Now beg at the beg Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe for more.